rich system. Rich, rich system. Okay. So let's start off some readings here, and we'll start off with the Twin Flames. Where's my overlays? Okay, there's the Twin Flames. So somebody already mentioned that they're on the Twin Flame journey. And... So if you're just... Um, bopping on because I'm going to edit this out for the Twin Flame separate video and the, or if you just uh, jumped right here. Where is it? There we go. We're, um, we're talking about this, the new moon, the human design new moon in Scorpio and it's in the 44, the 44th gate. So this is about Letting go of a distorted frequency. So this is the shadow. It's the, called the shadow interference. So you want to watch the beginning of the video or watch the longer video. And you will learn more about what this interference frequency is. And it's distorted. And what happens is it attracts the wrong people to you. This distortion frequency that you're putting out. So this new moon is about starting the process of letting go of this distortion frequency so that your true authentic frequencies can start to go out to the universe and attract to you people on your fractal line. Okay. And so twin flames, they are the fast track. This is the new spirituality or the twin flames here. So this is fast tracking, right? Because in terms of this, I mean, the twin flame is going to show you that your frequency is off like no other because there's a mirroring effect. It's a very powerful mirror that the twin flame shows you. And it's mirroring back to you this distorted frequency which comes from your, your uh, inner child wounding. Inner child wounding. So the name of the game here with the twin flame is to be... To realize yourself. To really realize yourself. So that means to realize your authenticity. It's to, be, it's to come into union with yourself. With yourself. So it's about bringing your masculine and your feminine energy together. Together. Remember I talked about this? There's an alchemy that takes place. And the alchemy is when the, the masculine and feminine energy comes together within you. It's not, a, it's not an external thing. It becomes into union with you. You come together with your emperor and your empress energy. And then they conceive. This is a spiritual conception. And out of this comes the divine child, which is your wounded child, becomes healed. That's the divine child, that divine inner child is born, is born, right? And this is the permanent opening of the heart. This is the solar plexus mutation right here, right? So you have the twin flame as a gift. The twin flame is a blessing to show you where you need to work, where you need to work. So you want to be looking at what's coming up for you this new moon. It's like, where am I still in this interference frequency, right? And look back, reflect this is a great time to reflect on your past relationships. And what were the themes in my past relationships? There was a common theme here. And this is one I want to dig out, dig up and let go, right? So that I can be my authentic self. So I've divided. I did this reading quickly before uh, we came on. So the, remember that there's the chaser and the runner and the runner. And the, they're the two expressions of the twin flame, right? The two expressions of the same soul frequency, the same soul frequency. So I just thought of that too, right? That when this distortion frequency is healed by doing the inner child work, then both twin flames are going to be sending out their, their frequency, which is going to be similar, right? And I just like sound sound waves are fascinating to me that the sine waves that when they're this the same they entrain right they entrain and this would be like a union a union interesting that's another video 
Okay, so let's look at the ego card, what the ego is, keeping you in distortion for the chaser, and then we'll go to the runner, okay? So the chaser is the one that seems to be the one chasing the other, the other person, the other party, and your twin flame, right? And the twin, the uh, runner is the one that seems to be running away and avoiding, avoiding the relationship, okay? So that's how they play out. Okay, but as a chaser, and both are runners, right? Because the chaser, when the chaser's chasing, the runner, it seem, it's it, they're really running from themselves. So it's the chaser has to stop and go into the self. The runner has to stop and go within themselves too, right? Okay. So for the ego card that's uh, keeping the distortion going. It's, this is the warning card right here, warning. And this is um, a refusal to change. So the chaser may be going through this, a refusal to change. And remember that five of cups, we go back here. This is the new moon. The five of cups is the, the decan that goes with the 44. This wasn't picked intuitively. So the Five of Cups breaks down to Scorpio, which is the Death card, and Mars, which is the um, Tower card, right? So the Tower is transformation. So this would be like a Tower reversed, right? So this is like avoiding change, avoiding change. And this is your, this is the ego, right? To avoid change, avoid evolving, avoid healing. Right, staying in that staying in that distorted frequency. And this, of course, is avoiding your destiny, avoiding your destiny. Um, and also the divine may be trying to reach you. So the other thing that happens on the twin flame journey is there's so many synchronicities. Right? And synchronicities are like messages from the divine. The messages from the divine is like, I see their name. I see my twin flames name everywhere. I see repeating numbers or I see mirror numbers like 1414 or 1331. It'll be unique to you. And that's the divine trying to reach you, right? And so the chaser may be uh, avoiding that, not listening and not trusting their intuition, not trusting their intuition letting doubt come in, letting the ego come in, right? Whatever it is. And this is going to keep you in, in a, <clears throat> excuse me, in an interference frequency where you're uh, not your authentic self, right? So, of course, that's the frequencies you're going to send out to the, to the world. And it's also, the warning is, because you see he's rip, ripping up a contract here, it's reneging on a spiritual contract, so trying to rene the ego trying to like break out of this soul contract that you made with your twin flame before you incarnate it, trying to weasel your way out of it. And that's the ego. Remember that the ego doesn't want anything to do with twin flame, right? Because the ego has to go. The, there has to be an ego death and a twin flame connection, right? That's what's happening. Whether you want to or not, you've been activated right? You both have been activated when you met in the 3D. That's when you got activated. And then this started the process of this ego death, right? So this is just bring suffering, right? Bring suffering. Um, and it's teaching you, right? It's teaching you. It's all about an awakening for both parties, right? So it's teaching you to trust your intuition, it's too easy if you just got, if, if this were easy and you, you read people's experiences and you could probably chime in if you're on a twin flame journey, if it were easy, it wouldn't, the ego death wouldn't come. The ego death wouldn't come. There's a reason why it's not easy because it's about you letting go of your not self, right? Your not self. Um, okay, so let's keep going on here. And so the chaser, what the chaser's not aware of, that's supporting them, 
is the King of Wands, the King of Wands. Right. So this is saying to not listen to the ego, right? Don't listen to the ego. And then the King of Wands is confident, it's passionate, it's passionate. This is about sitting in your throne, right? King of Wands, being yeah, sitting in your throne. It's vision, like looking at your vision, looking at the bigger picture to get into this state of mind, not resistance. Don't be using your energy to resist. I'm done with this. I'm not, right? I'm avoiding this. It's like the chaser becomes a bit of the runner. See? And if you're a twin flame, you're going to relate to a little bit of both, both, not just one or the other, right? You can probably relate to both. So this is optimism, right? These is the, the this is ruled by the, the fire signs, right? Leo, Aries, Sagittarius. It's getting into your fire as a chaser. So to, to, to be, and this is supporting you right now, right here. Right, I know, I'm sitting in my throne. I'm optimistic, I see the big picture. I'm taking control of my life. I'm not gonna feel victimized by this process. And I keep moving on, right? I keep moving on and growing and expanding. And that's what the new moon wants with the 44, right? It's to keep growing, keep evolving, keep learning your lessons. And then at the, uh, the guidance here is the four of cups reversed, which means that, whoops, to have gratitude, right? The four of cups reversed is gratitude. Gratitude to bring that more into. So this is how you see the world, right? Are you seeing the world half full? The glass is half full or half empty, right? So you want to have gratitude as the chaser. I have gratitude for what for what I have, for what I have. Oh, isn't that interesting too? <laughs> Is um, the 26, I didn't talk about this, but I just want to flip around here. So this is making a channel, right? The channel of surrender, the desi design of a transmitter. This is the 26 and it's a point one. Right, and it's in Venus, 26.1. And this is the like the grass is greener somewhere else, right? The grass is greener somewhere else. It's in Venus here. So this is, this is all about gratitude. Don't be thinking that the grass is greener somewhere else, right? There's a better option for me or whatever, you know? It's trying to escape. And this is manipulation. This is pride. Right? This is the shadow of pride, the 26, which pride and interference, right? So the pride, the pride here is you don't want to look powerless, right? That's what the, the shadow of pride has to do here. So that would fit in with the guidance here of the, to have gratitude, to have gratitude and awareness and acceptance and choosing happiness right? Choosing happiness. And it is a choice. The victim doesn't want to hear this. It's a choice to choose happiness in every, each and every moment. And also what's interesting, the chasers got this last time, the Empress card, and that's Venus. There's Venus again in the 26.1. And the Empress is total self-love, right? Total love of the self. This is your divine feminine. That's the overall energy here. Yeah. So take control of your life, have gratitude, and don't be shirking. Don't do not be shirking on the contract that you signed before you incarnate it. So it doesn't it doesn't mean that you stop. Well, my twin flame isn't here with me, so how can I do my sole purpose? It's no, you keep moving, moving forward, but having this just in mind. Right? So you're not fighting and resisting. Like, no, I don't want anything to do with that twin flame. I'm done with them. Right? And pushing. You're feeding that energy. You're feeding the energy of resistance. This is not acceptance. Or uh, the same, you're not on the other side of the pole. And it's like, I can't move on until I'm waiting. Right? I'm always waiting. I'm wait I have to wait till I... I can move forward with this King of Wands. It's like, no, you're not, you're doing neither. It's just in your awareness. I have this contract 
and I'm going to make lemonade from these lemons that life seems to be giving me, right? That's the four of cups in the reverse. Yeah. But there's a lot of self-love here. So for the chasers, I just feel like there's a little, little bit of tweaking, right? A little bit of tweaking here. Um, okay, so who's the, the runner here? The ego that's, that has to be worked on that keeps you in interference for the runner is called, who's your daddy? Who's your daddy? And remember, you can only have one daddy, right? You can only have one daddy. One daddy is the divine or the ego, right? Isn't that interesting? That just disappeared on me. <laughs> I don't know why it's doing that. It must be a setting. Okay, right? So you can only serve one master, the ego or the divine, or the divine. You can't serve both, right? It's impossible. So the ego here that you have to, that's keeping you in an interference program, right? So this is out of your power, right? There you are. You're sending out, you're sending out waves here, right? From your wounded, your wounded self. Your wounded self that the twin flame has activated. Your wounded self. So that you can see these deep, deep wounds that you weren't even aware of were there. The twin flame has activated those for you. Right? And there's the ego. The ego doesn't want you coming into your authentic frequency. Right? Your true frequency. Because there's power. Remember, Scorpio is all about power. All about power. Pluto, power. It's all about power. So the ego is like, choose me. Choose me and I will take you. I will take you where you need to go. I'll tell you what to do. Right? I'll tell you what to do. So this is the big test of the dark night of the soul. This is the dark night of the soul card. Right? Right here. Because... What happens is you're tested in your faith when you go through a dark night of the soul. And this is when everything is just like falls apart in your life. Everything's not working. There's just one thing after another. Can I just rest? Which means can't I just go back asleep? Right? When th things were so good before I met that twin flame. That's what the ego says. Things were so good. You didn't feel it. You didn't feel all these gravely stuff, right? You feel so horrible around your twin flame. Well, those, the, all that stuff was there in the be, well, well before you met your twin flame. It's always been there, but you've never been able to access it until you met your twin flame. So there's the ego. It's like, let's go back to sleep. Let's go back to what it was like before you met your twin flame, when everything was comfy, right? Maybe not all comfy, comfy, but I didn't have to deal with this. Right? And Scorpio is like deep, deep waters, fixed water. Right? It's going to go, it goes to the bottom. Water always goes to the bottom. Right? So it's going to bring up stuff to, to look at for the runners. So this is the big test of faith. That's what the dark night of the soul is. And are you going to choose the ego, your mind, your not self, or are you going to choose the divine? Are you going to choose the divine and put your trust in the divine? Put your trust in the unknown. Am I going to transcend my fear? Scorpio is all about transcending fear in this lifetime. Right? So um, that's what's keeping you in an interference frequency right now. Right? For the runners. Um, and so this is good. It's a good thing. It's a good to get, good to get this card. And then what's supporting you is um, the two of cups. The two of cups there, right? So we could look at this. So this is partnership, equal partnership. This could be your, this could represent your twin flame, right? The two of cups. Uh, connection is your twin flame connection is supporting you. Uh, even though you're maybe in separation, you're still energetically connected to one another. So the runner can feel this, right? As soon as one moves forward in their evolution, 
in their healing, the other one's going to feel it. The other one has to catch up, right? That's how it works. You're permanently, permanently connected. No cord cutting, none of that stuff works with the twin flame, right? So you're, you're stuck together in a sense, like Siamese twins, energetic Siamese twins. Even though you may not ever see each other, right, on the, on the physical. But the runners can kind of lean into that energy here. But let's bring it to the internal. And this says that there's a unity. There's the masculine and the feminine energy coming together within the runner, right? So this is something that's happening through this dark night of the soul that they're coming into union. And the runners are more in their masculine energy, right? Which is more typically, doesn't matter if they're male or female, because you can have female, like runners that are in female form and chasers that are in masculine or masculine form, right? So it's bringing the masculine and the feminine together, right? So the runner would no, start to depend more on their intuition. Maybe they're too much in their masculine energy and they're too much in their logic, too much in the Maya and how things move and trying to be strategic and focused and it's not working anymore, right? The old ways aren't working anymore. Well, this is about coming more into your feminine and trusting in the divine and listening to your intuition. So there's that that the runner can rely on. Um, yeah. Okay. And then the guidance is the, uh, the Five of Swords. The guidance is the Five of Swords. So this is more conflict. But where's the conflict really coming from? It's here. Am I choosing my ego in this moment or am I choosing the divine in this moment? Am I choosing to trust in the divine in my intuition or am, or am I following my ego, which is going to pump out fear? It will hemorrhage fear, the ego, because it's built on fear and insecurity. The divine is going to feel, you'll feel love and peace when you start to choose the divine. You'll be overcome by love and peace when you start not listening, but acting on it. Um, so this could be self, letting go of self-sabotaging thoughts. That's the five of swords. Letting go of this conflict between the ego and, the, the ego and your intuition. And um, not letting yourself be bullied by your mind. This is the ultimate bully. Once you deal with all the bullies and the enemies inside you, you're not going to be met with them on the external. So maybe you've got five of swords being expressed through other people right now, but it's really coming from within you. And it's forcing you to trust in the divine and come into union with your self, like your masculine and feminine energy. And then the overall energy for the runner is the wheel of fortune. And that means things are moving right there. Things are moving, right? There's a change. There's a cycle for this new moon, a cycle. And the Wheel of Fortune, because it's upright, it's for your benefit, for your spiritual journey. And there's luck. It's unexpected events. It's fortune. It's fortune is waiting for you and change and change. Yeah, but movement, there's movement here. Because remember that the 44, right? The 44 and the new moon is fear of the past. It's the fear of the past. Okay. So remember to learn your lesson. What have, your, what have you been learning? What have you been learning? What doesn't work anymore? What's that ego telling you? Is that e that's the definition of an insanity. Doing the things, same things over and over and over again, expecting different results. You want to learn the lesson so that you can move forward for this new moon cycle. Okay, anything else for the twin flame? No, I think that's it. Okay. So remember uh, to check out if you haven't checked out the, the Frida and uh, uh, Diego video, that's on my channel, part one. And part two is on my website. Okay.
So let's go to uh, Okay. Okay. We're going to go to the uh, human design types now. Okay. And thank you everybody for liking my video. That really helps get the message out. Okay. 